Lewis dot structures can be hard to get right sometimes, not knowing what to do with all the dots that don't seem to line up. Are they bonding electrons or are they lone pairs? Well, I'm going to show you a foolproof way to draw Lewis dot structures. But first, a few basics that you have to know. When given a molecular formula, know that the atom with the lowest subscript number or fewest amount of atoms in the molecule is usually the central atom. So start by determining the number of valence electrons in the central atom. To do that, we'll use the periodic table, find boron, and then count from left to right in the same period or row until you get to boron. Simple as that, it has three valence electrons. So now, start the Lewis dot structure by writing the chemical symbol of the central atom and envisioning that any chemical symbol has four sides to it. And then, start drawing the dots one by one on each of the sides. Boron only has three, so we'll draw one electron on three of its sides. So now let's look at the three chlorines attached to the boron. We'll have to figure out how many valence electrons a chlorine has by going to the periodic table, finding chlorine, and then counting from left to right in the same period or row until we get to chlorine. It has seven valence electrons. So then we'll draw each of the three chlorines near the single electrons on the boron. Then to draw the seven valence electrons around each of the chlorines, envision that the chlorine chemical symbol has four sides to it. Then you draw one electron near the single electron on the boron and the rest of the electrons on the other three faces one by one until they start pairing up. The three electron pairs are natural lone pairs while the single electron between the two atoms are bonding electrons. Because a single bond consists of two electrons, one shared by each of the atoms in the bond. So now do the same thing with the other two chlorines, starting with one electron near boron single electron, and then the rest of the electrons on the other three faces, one by one, until they start pairing up. And after each atom's electrons are drawn, you can see where the bonds will form and where the lone pairs will remain, giving you the Lewis dot structure and the molecular bond structure. The orientation of the molecule doesn't really matter. If you had put boron single electrons in different locations, you would have put chlorine in different locations, but ultimately giving you the same Lewis dot structure and the same molecular bond structure. Let's do an example with a lone pair on the central atom. In this molecule, there's only one nitrogen and three hydrogens, making nitrogen the central atom. Nitrogen has five valence electrons, and each of the hydrogens have one valence electron. So just like before, start by drawing the central atom, and then drawing the electrons one by one on each of the four sides of the chemical symbol until they pair up. Then draw the three hydrogens near the single electrons on the nitrogen and each of their one valence electron near nitrogen single electrons. You can now see where the bonds will form between the nitrogen and the hydrogens and that there will be a remaining lone pair on the central atom. So here's the Lewis dot structure and the molecular bond structure. You can draw the lone pair on the molecular bond structure, although you don't have to, just always know it's there. Now let's draw an example with a double bond. In this molecule, we have one carbon with four valence electrons, two hydrogens, each with one valence electron, and one oxygen with six valence electrons. Do notice that there's only one carbon and only one oxygen, which may make it confusing to determine which one is the central atom. Well, a little hint, if carbon's in your molecule, bank on carbon being your central atom. So start with carbon and draw each of its four valence electrons on each of its four sides, and then draw the hydrogens on two of the sides and the oxygen on a third side. Then draw hydrogens one electron near the single electrons in the carbon and draw oxygen six valence electrons, just like we did before, starting with one near carbon single electron and then the rest on the other three faces one by one until they start pairing up. 
Now that we've drawn all our electrons, notice that carbon and oxygen still each have a single electron hanging out there. And we can't leave single electrons just hanging out. They have to be used for bonding, which means move them between the carbon and oxygen to form a double bond. And do notice that the natural lone pairs on the oxygen remain. So here's the Lewis dot structure. And notice there are four electrons representing the double bond between the carbon and the oxygen. And here's the molecular bond structure. And remember, it doesn't really matter where you draw the atoms around the central atom, as long as you pair up the single electrons for bond formation and let natural lone pairs remain as lone pairs, giving the same Lewis dot structure and the same molecular bond structure, just different orientation. How about a molecule with a triple bond? In this molecule, we have a hydrogen with one valence electron, a carbon with four valence electrons, and a nitrogen with five valence electrons. Start the same way by banking on carbon being the central atom and surround it with its four valence electrons, and then draw the hydrogen and nitrogen on one side and surround each of those with their valence electrons. Now notice there's still single electrons in both the carbon and the nitrogen, and you might be tempted to move one of the single electrons to create a lone pair, but you cannot use single electrons to create lone pairs. They must be used for bonding. So take the single electron from the carbon and the single electron from the nitrogen and move it between them to form a bond, and then take the other single electron and move it between them for another bond. This creates a triple bond, while nitrogen maintains its lone pair. So here's the Lewis dot structure, and notice there's six electrons between the carbon and nitrogen, forming the three bonds of the triple bond. And here's the molecular bond structure without the lone pair on the nitrogen. However, just know it's there. Now let's draw a Lewis dot structure for a molecule with more than one central atom. In this molecule, we have two carbons, each with four valence electrons, and six hydrogens, each with one valence electron. There are two carbons, each with a subscript of one, so there's going to be two central atoms. So start by drawing both central atoms, and surround each of the carbons with their four valence electrons. Then draw the six hydrogens near each of the single electrons on both the carbons, and there you have it. Bonds will form between the carbons and the hydrogen surrounding. Here's the Lewis dot structure and the molecular bond structure. Now let's do some examples with charges, starting with the negative charge. This molecule has a formal molecular charge of negative one. It has one carbon with four valence electrons, three hydrogens each with one valence electron, and one oxygen with six valence electrons, and a negative charge, which means add one electron. Start it the same way that we've started all the previous examples, with carbon as the central atom, surrounded by the other atoms. But the only difference here is oxygen still has a single electron, but there's no single electron left on the carbon to form a double bond. So now what do we do? Well, just remember that there was a negative one molecular charge, which means add one electron, which essentially means the oxygen will have an extra lone pair giving it a negative charge. Here's the Lewis dot structure where oxygen gained one electron, creating one extra lone pair. And here's the molecular bond structure, showing the required negative charge on the oxygen. Now let's do an example of a molecule with a positive charge. This molecule has a nitrogen with five valence electrons, four hydrogens, each with one valence electron, and a positive charge which means remove one electron or use an extra electron. I'm gonna first show you the easy way to do a Lewis dot structure by removing one electron. We'll start the same way as we started all previous examples, but notice there's an extra electron between the top hydrogen and nitrogen. You may be tempted to move the hydrogen and let the nitrogen have its natural lone pair, but there is no other atom with an extra electron to bond with it. So what do we do? Well. It's a positive one charge, which means remove an electron, which leaves nitrogen with one less electron, giving it a positive charge. 
Here's the Lewis dot structure, and notice that nitrogen only has four of its five valence electrons surrounding it. Now I'll show you what actually happened. Everything else was the same, except one hydrogen must have come in without its electron, meaning having a positive charge. The nitrogen donates both of its lone pair electrons to form a bond with the positively charged hydrogen. Essentially, it loses one electron in that bond, giving it a positive charge. So here's the Lewis structure where nitrogen has its five valence electrons. However, it's using one of the electrons to form a bond with the hydrogen that did not have an electron. Either way, it looks the same as the previous Lewis dot structure. And here's the molecular bond structure with the required positive charge on the nitrogen. Simple as that. I hope this video makes drawing Lewis dot structures easier and foolproof. Thank you for watching.